I absolutely cannot wait to find out what Ticket Moon Plains has in store for us today. This is our third attempt at unlocking all the cabins around the map, and there's only four? And you start at one of them. There's three cabins to unlock, and we have just gotten distracted time after time chasing things like our five-star wildebeest, the albino cape buffalo, and it's a very good problem to have, but I've been most excited about this because from what I can tell on the map, there's a very different terrain on this third compared to the other two thirds that we've already explored. It looks very mountainous, and I'm really excited to see what is actually out here. I'm expecting things kind of like this. We have a Pride Alliance here, and it looks like maybe one or two matures. So we're going to sneak in, spot them, and see what we might be looking at, and hopefully get to take one out that could benefit the Pride. And I would say that's the one we're going to want to target right there. Now, there's a three-star mature in there, which is fairly encouraging, but remember, they have to go to 488 to get to 5-star, and max score is 500, so there's not a lot of room in there for them to get above that mark, but definitely, taking out a 1-star mature is going to help things out, so if he'll kind of stand back up how he was, I'm pretty sure we can get that shot in there. <laughs> Looks fine, that's a lot of blood, so I think we hard shot him, and that's not a bad way to start, but I'm really going to be intrigued as to just what lives in these areas. The further south we go, the more we kind of get into those mountains. So real quick, we'll get our hopefully beneficial one star claimed here. That was indeed a hard shot 278 yards away. The 300's proved to be a really solid gun for Africa so far. 36%, so good to get that out of there. And our exploration of the more mountainous area of Tikamoon Plains officially begins now. Now that's what we like to see, a three-star mature. And Gemsbuck are another one of those species, they live to 20 years old, and there's a long maturity state, about 10 years, similar to lions, so I think that guy's got a very real chance. I'd like to maybe, like, call him in and just get a better look at the size of him, because that's by far the best one we've seen, and it's notable from here, just how big he is. Now, that one in front of him, actually looks like a potential call animal? That's a one-star adult. I still want to get a better look at him, so let's see if we can bring him in. And this right here is literally all I wanted. I just wanted to get a good view of how big a three-star mature is, and it is really, really solid. I definitely took some time, got some screenshots. Hopefully this guy one day hits five-star, but for now, we're gonna have to worry about trying to help out the rest of the herd. So, there is a one-star adult that, at least compared to this guy, is nowhere near as big. And I think we'll just go ahead and try to take him. It's about 200 yards. Go down to 219. And much like in the case of the... Hold on a minute. I'm starting to think this is more than a coincidence. That happened with the first one we shot. It charged us after we shot it with the bow. I think that was actual charging behavior. And hopefully next time if we get charged... It'll be by one we can actually take out, but I do think it's good if something like that does charge you, you can sidestep it, and then it just goes to flee instead of just chasing you around in circles, and eventually you may be forced to shoot something you don't want to if it worked differently, but this was a double lung artery shot. I think we've done that a few times on this map. 44% adult, which, because they didn't respond to the high fitness caller, I figured that must be the case, so that should help things out. And... I believe before that one charged us, but I was about to say was, I've realized that every time we go to shoot a Gensbug, just the tankiness of them, you really notice it with those models. And actually for the first time, we've got a mature Kudu out here, it's a two star, but I actually wonder if he's got the worst genetics. I'm looking at these one star adults, and they are pretty unimpressive. I almost feel like they're going to be lower genetic potential, I could be wrong. But even the young Kudu, I'm pretty sure are typically bigger than that, so why don't we just go ahead and take this guy, and at least we'll be able to find out. I just don't feel like that could possibly be very high genetic potential. There was a call from Cape Buffalo somewhere. It was right up in here, and oh, they're actually standing up there. That one looks okay. I don't think there's any albinos standing there like in the herd from the last video. We might have to scoot up there and at least spot those. But to bring it back around to the kudu for a moment, stuff like this can be really important for managing your herds. Now, it's maybe less so for an animal that only gets to eight years old, but identifying weak genetics as like a young or adult can really, really help. Yeah, that was 23%. He was just so obviously 
smaller than the typical adult kudu we see. That potentially saves us, you know, several years of him just growing, getting to probably one or two star mature, and then us shooting him then. So hopefully, it's gonna be lower than the rest in that herd. I gotta imagine even the two star mature is better than that. And I think that ends up being a good decision. As for our Cape Buffalo, they're just kind of milling around up there, so we'll try to get in range and spot them. Actually, aren't we standing, like, right over there when we shot the Kudu? There's another herd. And a few that look pretty solid in there. Ooh. A three-star adult. Is that the one in the back there? It must be. So probably pretty good odds that he makes it. And the rest seem to be one or two stars, and two different two-star matures, so either we just try to headshot one of these things and insta-drop them, or get in a little bit closer. I do want to make sure that we stay far enough away that these guys don't hear it, and they're actually moving down the hill, so we may go with that headshot attempt. I'll be curious to see if it actually works on the Cape Buffalo. It's 250 yards, and we can 0 for 219, so that's going to be close enough. Just need to make sure he's not moving when we do it. <laughs> That's going to work just fine. So good deal. Help out that herd when we know there's positive genetics with that three-star adult. And of course, they are going to run right up to this other herd. So it might spook him anyway. I don't see anything huge there, but a couple that look solid enough that I want to see what they are. And actually, I think the best stuff in here are some matures. There's a two-star mature back there and then a one-star over on that side. So obviously, we want to get him. I guess we'll attempt that headshot again. We could get a little bit closer, but let's see what we can do from here. And of course, that other one's kind of in the way. That's clearing that up. I mean, if he goes broadside, we could do that. Drop down here a little bit more. But that's just going to drop him in his tracks there. And in theory, there's two separate zones right in this area. I still am confused about the herd with the three-star adult. Because I swear we should have spooked him when we shot the kudu. So I can't help but wonder if they maybe fled from somewhere else and just ended up there, there may not be a zone exactly in that spot. And I mean, unless I'm missing it, there is just nothing. There's a Cape Buffalo call. That's got to be the ones that fled from there. So this was the two-star that we shot. Didn't quite hit the brain, but basically getting in just close enough to the brain there would rupture the skull and instant drop him anyway. 52% as a two-star mature, so not bad but probably good to take out. And I was looking at the map. There's a few little ponds in this area. I assume they got a drink at one of those, so I think we'll be okay. But probably before we go too far, we gotta mark this spot and just screenshot it so we know to come back. There's that four star up by the Northwest cabin that we saw at the end of the last video. I hope he makes it. A three star adult's got probably a way better chance. And I'm just so glad we actually ended up doing this on foot. It worked out incredibly well. Just the way that we've got about this. This guy was a 26%, so really good to get him out of the herd. Far better than even taking out that 52%. But, I just think had we taken the UTV through here, we would have missed so much stuff, potentially spooked so many different animals. It's been far more beneficial to do it this way. And actually, because we're making decent progress here, we might just zip down to that little pond and see if there is a Cape Buffalo drink zone. And finally, we get to actually see that there are spotted hyenas up here. There's been a number of zones that we picked up, specifically in the north. Like, there was no doubting they were around, but we just weren't encountering them. And it took actually calling to just a sound we heard over the hill to get this guy to come in. But a two-star mature. We'll go ahead and take that out with the 308. I was surprised to see the hyenas are actually tier 5. I don't even think that spooked them. They're still down there laughing away, but maybe we can creep over the hill and see what else is there. But I don't think the hyenas are that big. In comparison to some other tier 5 animals, I'm pretty sure they're on the lower end. But almost certainly, that would have been another hard shot. It was indeed there at 100 yards flat. Straight through the heart with the 308. Plenty of energy still. I mean, that is 171 pounds. That's bigger than I would have thought. I didn't realize they were that big. So I guess that does actually make sense. I was guessing they were going to be a tier 4, but I think that'll be good in terms of trying to pick a loadout. Going with something like the 300 and the 308 really gives you pretty solid coverage. And then these guys would be the rest of that pack. Something I've found out that's pretty cool. Like real life, 
The females are actually bigger than the males. If we zoom in here, that's a young. And then you see the size of the females back there? Just for fun, and really is not a good idea to actually shoot a female animal. It, I believe, lowers the overall population on your map. We're gonna shoot this one. Just so we can take a look and see the weight. That looks like we smoked it, so it shouldn't go too far. And something to keep in mind, the animals, as they get older, also do get larger in terms of their weight. So it may be, if this is a younger female, not as big as that one that we just shot. This was an adult female, and it's 104 pounds. So I'm guessing a mature female will weigh more than a mature male, because the models are considerably larger. But I thought that was pretty cool when I realized that looking at the pack, I think the first ones we ever shot. Little details like that could, that could be easily missed. They're replicated in the game. And also, I think we got their zone right here, so that's good to know. But we are quickly moving towards our final goal for this video. Reaching that cabin right over there. It's 600 yards out. But before we do that, we may have an opportunity to kind of confirm our hypothesis earlier. Being that a small one-star adult kudu is pretty easy to identify and should be taken out. Now, there's a couple of them. And I kind of think maybe that one in the front is a little bit smaller. It's tough to tell. They're 300 yards away. And they're kind of moving in the other direction. But it's that one up front. And we're almost going to have to wait for an opportunity. Yeah, I think he is a little bit smaller than this one. This is the other adult that we're looking at right now. And once everything gets out of the way, including that two-star mature, maybe we can slot a shot in there. It's not a good angle at all. Let's see what that does. It looks good. And weirdly enough, how does that work? We definitely got him, but why did... Maybe they are going to spook? They hung around for a long time. So it took a bit. But we were able to track this guy down, and actually, now that we're up close, he's definitely pretty uneven. So I think, again, probably a good choice. Very high shot there. I didn't think we aimed that high. But it went through the lift flowing just fine and brought him down. That was a 51%, so still good to take out. Not nearly as impactful as that 20-something percent from earlier. But I think that'll work. And as we are now under 600 yards away, I'm hoping we can maybe stumble into one more herd of animals or something else to take out, but... It's amazing what you can get done when you're not chasing an albino K buffalo for two hours. And we just might have one final chance. Finally, we have a lion in this area. It looks like it's either an older adult or maybe a mature. 700 yards away and kind of moving up that hill. We'll try to scoot over there and get a spot on him and just figure out what he is. And I guess before we do that, we might as well swing by here and unlock this. And he is a one-star mature, so... Definitely one we want to take out, and so long as we can manage to do that, we'll be bookending this hunt with one star mature lion, so go figure. But we'll do a low fitness call. Just try to get him to turn around, and if he'll even face us, we should be able to get that shot with the 300. He's doing that, and he's around 250. This angle as well, I think we'll want a 0 for 219, so let's see if we can get that just right. Looks pretty good to me. And we'll get an additional shot in there just for good measure. Hopefully that's going to bring him down. I felt like the shot was good. I'm actually not so sure it did hit the lung like I thought it would. We definitely did get him. I'll be intrigued to see what actually happened there. Because the main thing was, I didn't see any blood on the ground when we took that first shot. Oh yeah, that was not a lung shot. What happened? A little bit too far to the right? I think we led him too much because he was walking like down that way. And then the second shot just clipped the very back of the lungs and saved us there. I think liver probably would have brought him down, but then again, the amount of damage that did, maybe it wouldn't have. Definitely lucked out in that case, but that was a 41%. Good to take that out. And I think that's going to be our last kill of this video. There is still a huge amount of this map, like, kind of in the center that we have yet to explore. Probably when we pick up tomorrow, which will be release day, we'll go ahead and start to do some of that. And I'm really looking forward to what you guys have to say about this map with the release coming in less than 24 hours. But anyway, that's going to do it for this video. So as always, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you next time.